In this last video in the weight management unit, I want to talk about eating disorders. And before we get there, I think it's important for me to bring up the fact that just even talking about eating disorders can bring up a lot of things for people, especially if they are currently dealing with an eating disorder or if they have in the past. So just be kind to yourself, be compassionate with yourself as you learn this material and take it at a pace that um, doesn't feel triggering, doesn't feel uh, overwhelming. I want you to know that we are approaching this topic from a very open and non-judgmental point of view. I more so want to give you an overview of these things than, you know, I never want to provoke any self-judgment or any negative feelings. Okay, so uh, please know that as we go in here, I personally have studied, struggled with eating disorders as well. I've kind of would say I had a combination of binge eating disorder and bulimia. And I know how much that can be overwhelming. If you do need help on these topics, I recommend looking up a Kelty Resource Center in British Columbia, which has a number of clinics across the, the province and resources across the province that can help you get help with this topic if that is a concern for you. And they also have more um, information about these eating disorders for yourself or for someone else that might go go be going through this. Okay, so I had to, oopsie, <laughs> wanted to frame this discussion that way and now we are going to learn about eating disorders. So eating disorders, it's not about like, it's when I teach, um, when I usually teach this class, I actually put eating disorders in the mental health unit because they actually, in my opinion, fit better there because eating disorders aren't really about body weight. That's more of like an outcome. It's more about something going on psychologically, okay? And it's not, it's hard to like say what that is because it really depends on the person. And we don't, although we are going to kind of generalize as we go through this, I don't want to overgeneralize because these things can show up in really different ways depending on the person, okay? But some common features, which again isn't going to encompass everyone, is dissatisfaction with body image and weight distorted thinking this sort of seems kind of like a very judgy term but like thinking that's that's maybe limiting beliefs thinking right or thinking that our you know our moral value and our value in this world is determined by our size okay perfectionist beliefs beliefs unreasonable demands for self-control and excessive self-criticism yeah that's about summarizes my 20s <laughs> as I look at that list, okay? Uh, it is more common amongst teams and especially amongst females, right? About 30% of males, though, have also reported unhealthy behaviors. That doesn't necessarily mean that they've had eating disorders, but they've had some of this, what we might call disordered eating, which when extreme or when kind of go goes on for a while can increase the risk of eating disorders, Okay. There are three main eating disorders that are recognized by the American Psychiatric Association. And the first one is called anorexia nervosa. Anorexia means lack of appetite. Nervosa signifies the fact that it's, it's mental, like that it's, yeah, that it's psychological in nature. Okay. It, it's hard to define anorexia. We used to use like the fact that like if a body weight is excessively like low, like less than 85% of a healthy body weight, but we don't really classify it that way anymore. It's really kind of, you really want to go to a health professional, you know, to find out for sure what's going on. But usually we'll look at kind of the symptoms a person's expressing. Are they over exercising? Are they restricting a lot? Uh, but some individuals with anorexia also uh, purge as well. They might have a lot of like control about what they can and can't eat. Um, and it's important to note here that individuals with eating disorders, they might look like this um, and they might look like, you know, that, that it doesn't show up. And individuals with uh, eating disorders might be very good at kind of covering up what they're going through. Right. They can become their, you know, it's not like they, it's not like individuals with eating disorders, you know, are less intelligent or, you know, they're as intelligent as anyone else. And they can become kind of, you know, really clever at hiding these things for some people. So sometimes it's harder to, to identify, though when our anorexia becomes quite severe, it is a little bit more easy to identify than the other two eating disorders. Okay. 
There are a number of risks that go along with anorexia. Anorexia is actually the psychological dis psychological disorder with the highest mortality rate of any other psychological disorder. I'm going to say that again. It is an eating disorder with the highest mortality rate than any other eating disorder. And approximately half of that mortality comes from an increased risk of suicide and the other half come from like the complications of that really low body weight okay i want to say here that just because someone has a low body weight doesn't mean that they are uh, having anorexia and we want to be careful how we throw these terms around because I, I know sometimes like flip people flippantly use these terms and it's quite a serious condition so we want to make sure that we are giving it the right, you know, respect and, um, you know, we're not dismissing this disorder because it is quite serious. Okay. There are a number of cardiovascular, gastrointestinal, endocrine, and skeletal disorders that can result from anorexia dis um, nervosa. If you are currently dealing with anorexia nervosa, you may or may not be ready to get better yet. And I would recommend when you are ready to start looking for resources because this is one that typically needs outside help from a trained professional. Again, no judgments, but it is something that is quite serious and can really complicate current and future well being. Okay, so I wanted to say that again, no judgments, but it's just more that I want to emphasize how serious this condition is. Okay. Bulimia nervosa is the second most common eating disorder. It is more common than anorexia. And binge eating, dis oh, sorry, bulimia nervosa typically has kind of two parts to it. Okay. There's binge eating and then there's some sort of compensation, what we call compensation. Okay. So binge eating, which we also find in binge eating disorder, it's the same kind of binge eating. Binge eating is when it's not overeating. Overeating is what we do at Christmas or Easter, <laughs> right? Uh, or when we break fast, or when people break fast at Ramadan, right? Binge eating is different. Binge eating typically happens alone, typically happens in the absence of hunger, typically happens really quickly. And one of the biggest parts of binge eating, which again, is it found in both of these conditions, biggest parts of binge eating is what we call lack of control eating. And if you've never had these, that might be hard to understand. But as someone who has experienced both forms of bulimia and binge eating disorder, I've experienced it and I even have a hard time explaining it, right? Like, how could I be at a fridge and not stop myself from eating? I'd be like, it's so interesting. My brain would be like, stop eating. Okay, stop eating. Okay, stop eating. Okay. And it was like, it was like a gremlin, a monster that just kept wanting to eat and quite honestly reflecting back and this is typical of both bulimia and binge eating i was binge eating because of yeah internal cues but also for psychological reasons you know to escape some feelings that i was going through which is common in both of these conditions okay so that's binge eating the second part of bulimia nervosa that is not found in binge eating disorder is this concept of compensation and in compensation what happens is a person binge eats and then they compensate maybe by throwing up i had a form of bulimia where i would over exercise i'd go to the gym and i'd be like i'm not allowed to leave until i burn x amount of calories like quite obsessively right and you might think well that's not so bad well it is because i wasn't mentally healthy and again, health is more than just physical well-being. It's also mental and social well-being too, okay? So bulimia has binge eating and then compensation with the um, perhaps purging, perhaps over-exercising, perhaps the use of laxatives. Something else worth noting with bulimia is usually what you'll see quite a common pattern is that the binge eating and compensation happens at night and that person might eat very little all day long. And what's interesting is I heard it reframed that the purging isn't the compensation, the binging is the compensation. The binging is the compensation for eating so little all throughout the day. You know, if you eat so little all throughout the day, of course your body's going to be sending you a bunch of signals that say, eat, 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 I need food, right? So um, I, I thought I really enjoyed that, that, that reframe because it 
it shows that part of the problem with bulimia and binge eating too as well is that the restriction is something that can promote the binging right so again we have to relook at our relationship with food with these things okay if someone is vomiting when they have bulimia if that's their form of compensation what we call compensation it can provide a lot of risks to the teeth and to the esophagus the digestive tract because of the acid that someone is vomiting when they when they throw up okay it can also cause electrolyte imbalances which can impact heart health too Okay. The most common um, eating disorder that approximately affects 3% of individuals of all ages, more co- this one's more common in older people, is binge eating disorder. Okay, This is kind of the same as bulimia, except for there is no over-exercising or purging. Okay, so binging disorder is far more likely to be associated with obesity. And if you are working with individuals with obesity, one of the things we screen for is binge eating disorder because that kind of has to be dealt with before we can deal with um, the obesity. Okay, when it comes to treatments for eating disorders, um, we need to kind of go to the source as far as what is provoking that anorexia or that binge eating or that bulimia is it that someone is trying to control their eating behaviors because other parts of their lives feel out of control is it they are doing it because they perhaps aren't getting something at home and they want um, the attention of the individuals that aren't giving them that are they engaging in these behaviors because they have they don't feel perhaps that they're good enough the way they are and they have a lack of self-value. Again, no judgments with any of those things. Please let me make that clear. But my point here is that there isn't one source, one cause of these eating disorders, and we'd have to work with our individuals, or if we're dealing with it ourselves, look at ourselves as to what is provoking this. You know, and maybe working with a health professional can help us get to the source of it. Perhaps things like cognitive behavioral therapy or acceptance uh, commitment therapy. These are things that could help with managing these. Okay. So one of the main things with uh, anorexia that we do need to do as well, there's like the psychological counseling and then there's like the, you know, refeeding protocol as well. We, If the body weight is so low that it's compromising health, Often we need to get that body weight to a healthy size, okay? And uh, that's difficult when that individual without, like, that's difficult to do if we don't take into account what's going on psychologically. Because if we're telling them you need to eat more, but they're like, no, 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 I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, that's going to be really hard to do. So that's why psychological counseling is so important in this. Okay. With bulimia and binge eating, we do want to stabilize eating patterns again, perhaps by psychological, you know, um, approaches, right? Identifying changing behaviors that led to disordered eating and improving coping skills. Being kind to ourselves through all of this is so important as well. Okay. If there are other things that are promoting those eating disorders, we want to look at those too. But in general, like I said, eating disorders are something that do affect adolescents more than older individuals, um, with the exception of binge eating which disorder, which can happen at any age. And they're less about food than they are about psychological things that are going on. There are complications that are associated with all three of these eating disorders. And if this is something that you are dealing with, there is nothing wrong with you but it might be something that needs extra help to get through and people that do seek treatment tend to get better and there absolutely is a way to live a life where you feel comfortable and safe and healthy in your body and where you can enjoy food and you can enjoy movement right and we don't spend our lives obsessive about food that is an absolute possibility, I promise you, right? But it might take time and effort to get there. But taking the first step by reaching out to a professional, right, that you could find through the Kelty Resource Center or at SFU, you can go through health and counseling as well, or use the My SSP app too, to potentially link with someone that can help you. Taking the first step towards treatment is such an important part of the healing process, okay?
So that said, it has been a pleasure uh, helping you uh, learn about these last two units. If you uh, want to take one of my other courses, like I mentioned, I also teach PPK 110, Human Nutrition, and I also teach that fourth year obesity course, but you have to be in uh, BPK to be able to do that, which is um, 417, Obesity, Adipocyte Function, <laughs> and Weight Management. So it's been a pleasure, and I hope you enjoy your BPK 140 class.